Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming on OneLegacyRadio.com. Serenity is a new show that we started, and we're looking for your questions because what we want to do on Serenity is we really want to get your your feedback about what it is that you're dealing with. What are the uh, difficulties, the challenges, the questions that you have? And what we want to do is take that and make this a discussion where we take those issues and we look at them through a lens of a God-centered world. So basically looking at these problems and looking for spiritual solutions to those difficulties and answers that come from God and not from society and not from the media and not from our own selves. So we really hope to take and embark on that on that path by getting your questions and discussing them on the show. And of course, everything will remain anonymous. So please do send your questions to serenity at onelegacyradio.com. Now, today we're going to be talking about a question that I received uh, about a relationship uh, problem that somebody was having. Now, the question that this person had asked was regarding, uh, this person had actually just recently got married. And what, you know, what they didn't understand is why after getting married, they suddenly felt, you know, this, this constant sort of disappointment, this, uh, you know, sadness. They always felt like they were being let down or they felt always like they were, uh, you know, they were, they were never really happy. They just didn't feel that. And they always wanted more or expected more from their spouse and was constantly being let down. And one of the things that happens, I think, a lot of times, especially when we get married or, you know, in, in other types of relationships, it really has to do with the type of attachment that we create. Uh, see, as human beings, we are created with a particular nature. And that nature is that we want and need to connect to God. We need to worship God. We need to understand God and, and create that attachment to Him and put our dependence on Him. Basically, as human beings, we are created with this this desire to recognize greatness. And so what often happens, unfortunately, when the, you know, God isn't there, we replace that with other things. And sometimes we replace it with other people. And this is where, uh, you know, almost it becomes like a sense of worship, where you see, for example, that uh, celebrities, and you see the type of um, you know, idolism, the, the way that people idolize them, it's almost like worship. And so we as human beings, what we're doing here is we're trying to fill this emptiness inside us. We're trying to fill this need inside of us, but we're filling it with the wrong things. And so this, even as Muslims, and this, 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 we do this, um, this happens a lot of times in relationships. And so in the case of marriage, for example, uh, what, what often happens is that we go into marriage with these expectations of this person, but these are not realistic expectations. They're expectations that we should only have for God. It, they're expectations we should only have of God, in fact. And, and so what happens then is there, you find that there is this constant disappointment. And one of the symptoms of the fact that we, we do have a false attachment or that we are putting our expectations in the wrong place is this sadness, is this constant disappointment, is this feeling that we're being let down. Because let me give you this, this example. If you're climbing a cliff, and you get to a point, you're really high up, and you see this twig hanging there. And if you reach out and you hang on to that twig and you, you only, all of your weight is only on that twig, what's going to happen to you? Well, the answer is that your, that twig is going to break because by definition, that twig was never created to hold your weight. And so what will happen when that twig breaks is that you fall. And when you fall, you break or you, you know, you may or may not get back up, but what happens is you fall. And that's that process of disappointment. That's that process of being let down over and over. It comes from the fact that we're hanging on to the wrong things. We're seeking the wrong things to fulfill us. We're seeking the wrong things to give us happiness and contentment. And, and so what, what, what we need to do here is bring it back and bring our focus back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Within marriage, for example, 
Allah says that He created for you spouses. So Allah says in the Quran, and this is the ayah you're gonna see right on every wedding invitation. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسَكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ um, now, the, if you look at this ayah, and this is that from among his signs, and now this is important, from among his signs is this, that he created for you, he created for you spouses, that you may dwell in tranquility with them. Now, this is the first part, is he created for you spouses that you may dwell in tranquility with them, and he created between you mawadda and rahma, this love and mercy. Now, notice that the, even in this, even in this, what is the purpose of this love and mercy? Allah says that it's a sign. So even the love and the mercy that Allah creates between a husband and wife ultimately is just a means. And what is it a means of? It's a means of God. It's a means of reaching Allah. Because Allah says at the beginning of the ayah, that in this is a sign. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ And from among his signs. Okay, this is not an end in and of itself. That, that feeling that you have and that gift that you have between your hearts is not an end in and of itself, like you see in the movies, right? Where the whole purpose of their existence and the whole purpose of their striving is to reach you know, that love, that romantic love, that other person that's going to complete them. And that's it. And then the movie ends at that point, right? Because that's it. That's the end. That's the purpose. It isn't that way. That even within that gift of that love and that mercy, it isn't an end in and of itself, but it's actually a means. It's a means to reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah says that this is a sign. And then the ayah even ends with that repeated, that this is a sign for those who reflect that this is, again, Allah repeats that this is a sign, but it's a sign for those who reflect. So what are we supposed to be learning from this? What are we supposed to be reflecting? When we feel that love and that mercy between ourselves and our spouse, we are supposed to use that as a pointer to God. Even that is not an end in and of itself, but rather a means to recognize Allah's mercy and Allah's great greatness and Allah's generosity and love for us that He's giving us this, you know, a, a, in order to have tranquility. And so it's really, really important because what unfortunately we're taught since we're very young is that we are seeking this other person to complete us. We're seeking this other person to save us. And this is a really, really uh, prevalent message throughout, you know, love stories, even as early as fairy tales. Uh, if you look at the story, for example, of uh, Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty is basically this woman who is in this comatose state, right? She's basically dead. And the only thing that can save her is if a man comes and kisses her. And so the idea here is that the man is going to come and save the woman. That you're waiting for this person to come and save you. There is no person who is going to save you. The only thing... The only one who can save you is your creator. The only thing that's going to fill you and fulfill you and give you happiness and give you strength is your creator. And so what happens to us is that when we go into relationships with the wrong expectations, what we're doing is we're putting that person in a place that they were never meant to be. And we're expecting from them things that they were never intended to give. And they are not able to give because those things can only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, we'll take a break now. And when we get back, we'll continue talking about the issue of relationships and why do we constantly fall into disappointment. You're listening to Serenity. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is Yasmin Mujahid. You're listening to Serenity. And we're talking today about relationships. And we're taking your questions uh, about, 
you know, issues, and then we're talking about them anonymously uh, on this show. And today we're talking about a question about someone who had gotten into a relationship. They had recently gotten married, and they feel like they don't understand why they're constantly disappointed and constantly sad, and they're not really getting, uh, you know, they're not feeling that peace and that tranquility uh, inside of the marriage. And so what what we what we really um, you know need to realize a lot of times with our relationships is that the sadness that we that we feel a lot of times the uh, disappointment that we feel is due to wrong expectations and that actually is very much related to our relationship with God what happens is that we as human beings it, it's almost like we have this hole inside of us and it can only be filled with closeness to God. It can only be filled by God. But if we are not filling it with God, um, sometimes what we do instead is we try to fill it with other things. And even if we're Muslim and even if we believe in God, sometimes we don't realize that we have these, these false attachments to other things other than God. And some of the ways that we can know that we do have these, you know, these false attachments or these, these wrong expectations is precisely from the pain itself. You'll find that the source of, uh, what is causing you most pain in your life or what is causing you the most disappointment. Something is, is, is really, it's that one, you know, that, that knife that's always cutting you and that's really causing you the most distress. Usually, if you look at that thing, you'll find that that is where your false attachment is. That, that, that thing which you attach yourself to in a, in a, in a, in an ultimate way. And, and I want to explain what I mean by false attachments. False attachments, it doesn't mean, uh, that we shouldn't love anything or that we shouldn't be attached to anything in the, in the, in the sense that we usually use in our society. A false attachment is when we are li- looking or seeking something other than Allah to fulfill us completely, to support us completely, to, 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 uh, give us, you know, and, and, and really like, um, you know, fill that part inside of us. And we're looking to something other than Allah, uh, for that ultimate hope and that ultimate support and that ultimate love. It's, it's when we are looking to something other than God to give us our self worth. It's when we're looking to something other than God to decide whether we are okay or not. Um, basically it's when, it's when there's something other than God that we absolutely absolutely could not live without and i know that you know again this is the type of um so-called love that's really sold in the media but really it isn't the way love uh should be as it was intended by god it is more in the realm of worship because if there's something that you absolutely would just crumble without if there's something other than god that you would absolute you would have no reason to exist anymore without then that means that that thing is a a an object of worship it's it's a false attachment so while we do love our families and we love our children we love our parents we love our spouses our love for them should not become worship and when does it become worship well obviously we don't you know pray to them we don't make dua to them we don't seek them in that way but sometimes this worship can be very hidden and the way again that we know and the way that we can tell that it's there is it will become a source of constant sadness for us it will become a source of constant disappointment for us and that disappointment and that sadness and that pain actually is a an indicator. It's a sign that there's something wrong with our attachments and that we have to, we have to readjust our attachments. Now, I, I, I love to, uh, share this ayah because it's something that's so, so deep and explains this idea, uh, of, of what happens when you do attach yourself to something other than Allah. And that's, uh, an ayah in, um, it's chapter 22, verse 73. And it says what is translated as people. Here is an illustration. So listen carefully. Those you call on besides God could not, even if they combined all their forces, create a fly. And a fly, and if a fly took something away from them, they would not be able to retrieve it. 
How feeble are the petitioners and how feeble are those they petition? Now, at first, it's, it's, it's somewhat difficult to understand, you know, what, what is the significance of this parable? But it's extremely deep. And what it's saying here is that these people or these things that we seek and that we, we go to, uh, you know, to fulfill us or to help us or to support, these things that we turn to, they couldn't create even a fly. And the last part of that ayah is extremely profound. And what it says is that the, the seeker and the sought are both weak. They're both feeble. What does that mean? That when you seek something which is limited or weak, then by definition, you too become weak, weak, limited and weak and vulnerable. And so the problem is that when we seek that which we seek, if that which we seek is, is Allah, if that which we seek is strong and, and perfect and unbending, then we too become strong because that thing never breaks. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, for example, that whoever holds the handhold of Allah, that the handhold of Allah is the one that never breaks. And, and any other handhold, and that's the point, and that's the lesson, that any other handhold other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will break. And so the lesson here again is that when you're feeling like you're in this relationship and you know you, you don't understand why do you keep getting disappointed it's because it has everything to do with our expectations it has everything to do with what you are seeking from that other person that they're not able to give you because it was not intended for them to give it to you those things can only be given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we feel sadness if we feel that emptiness it cannot be filled by anything else and if we try to fill it with anything else, and, and, and it isn't just relationships, but a lot of people try to fill this, this need with other things. For example, some people try to fill it with wealth or money, where the idea is that the more things that I have, the more I will feel content. But it does not fill us, and it will never fill us. Sometimes people uh, use their job in order to fulfill them they use their job as a as a way to fill that need and again it never will and so what will happen is you'll run after it you'll run after it and it will never ever be enough and that's the issue with the dunya is that everything in this life everything in the dunya and that includes all created things the hu human beings wealth you know status um you know our our fancy cars our fancy clothes even beauty you know this is something of the dunya because it's the physical body all of these things when we ch the more you chase after it the more it runs away from you and that it can never it can never fill you because the soul can only be fulfilled with one thing the heart can only be filled with one thing and that's closeness to the creator of it so right now we will take another break and when we return, we'll continue on the issue of relationships and how putting the wrong definitions and the wrong expectations can cause constant disappointment. Welcome back. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity. Now, we're talking today about relationships and why it is that sometimes when we get into a relationship, it we find ourselves unhappy, constantly disappointed, and feeling unfulfilled. And what what we just talked about, you know, was issue of you know within marriage that a lot of times. Uh, actually, statistics even show that the majority of divorces happen in the first year, and then after that, the second year. So this idea, you know, that, you know, the honeymoon is at the beginning and it's easy at the beginning actually isn't true. That the beginning, the first year of marriage tends to be when um, the majority of, of breakups actually happen. And we're talking about what could possibly be the reason for this. And what we're really getting at, it has to do with our expectations of 
human beings, our expectations of anything other than God. And the idea here is basically that we as human beings, we want to fulfill this, this need that we have inside of us. There is this emptiness that every human being has in them that can only be filled by one thing, and that is by God. And that when we search for other things to fill us, we'll always come back disappointed and empty-handed. And so this pattern of constantly being let down, whether, you know, in this case it was in the, in the sense of, it was in the case of marriage, uh, it, it's coming as a result of the fact that the expectation of this person is not the correct expectation. That between a man and a woman in marriage, there should be love and mercy, but, but that love and mercy in and of itself is actually a sign of something greater, which is God. And that the, the, you know, we, we should never seek another person to save us. We should never seek another person to, you know, complete, completely fill us because those are things that only God can do for us. And we can only have that satisfaction and that true happiness and fulfillment through our relationship to our Creator. And so, uh, you know, another uh, question that I actually had received, and please do send in your questions. We're looking for your questions at serenity at onelegacyradio.com. And, and, you know, of course your questions will always be anonymous. Uh, but we want, we want you to write in and, and ask your questions so we can discuss them. So one other question that I had received was a similar situation, but it was in the realm of friendship. And this is a person who, you know, was in, who has this, uh, problem where, you know, there's a, they're, they're very close to somebody, uh, or they have some friends and then there's like this, this fallout that happens or this constant sort of disappointment in our friends that we get close to. And I think this really comes back to, again, the very same problem. And that is that, you know, we, we seek our friends but we seek them for the wrong things. And this brings us to the issue really of love for the sake of Allah. We hear this term a lot, this phrase, but it's really difficult to understand what it means. Now, what it really means in the realm of friendship, for example, love for the sake of Allah means that what I give to you as a friend, I give for the sake of Allah. I don't give it so that you can give me back something in return. And when I say give me back something in return, I don't mean money. I don't mean, you know, you know, you know, material things. I mean that I don't expect from you anything in return, even in terms of your time, even in terms of your appreciation, even in terms of, you know, your support, but that what I give to you, I give and I expect my re my reward or my repaying from God, not from you. And that is such a deep and liberating concept because what it means is that we're no longer these needy people. We no longer are these people who, you know, we, we get so disappointed and hurt by, by people all the time because we are no longer in such a vulnerable position where we're waiting for something from a person and they don't fall, they don't come through and we're just devastated. And so if you find yourself, you know, in these types of cycles with, with, within your relationships, it's a sign that you are putting your trust in the wrong place, that you're seeking the wrong things in the wrong place for your support and your fulfillment and your self-worth. And that's also very important because a lot of times we seek other things to give us that sense of worth, to give us that validation. We seek sometimes other people liking us, other people, you know, um, thinking that we're smart, beautiful, successful. Sometimes we seek our career to validate us, to give us that sense of self-worth. We seek our, you know, our grades when we're, when we're in school. We seek, um, you know, again, we, we, we seek other people. We seek, we, we look at, you know, our possessions. We're looking to other things to make us feel good about ourselves, to give us that self-worth. And those things, like the ayah we talked about, those things are by definition weak. Those things are by definition limited. And so those things cannot provide us with that which we seek. Only God, the one who is unending and, and, and completely perfect, can provide us with those things. 
And so the way really, the solution to break out of this, this pattern of, you know, you get close to someone, they let you down. You get close to someone, they let you down. They get, this pattern is a, a sign that you have the wrong attachment to people and things. And it's a sign that you are expecting from those, you're expecting the wrong things from those people. And this is where we have to refocus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and on our relationship with Him. And within the relationship with people, it should be through Allah, because of Allah, and for Allah. And that's what loving for the sake of Allah means. It means that when I love you, it's because of Allah that I love you. And when I give to you, it's because of Allah that I'm giving to you. What does that mean? How does that revolutionize our relationships? Well, the way that it revolutionizes our relationships is that I no longer am in need from I am no longer in need of reciprocation. I'm no longer in need of you to give me something back. That 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 filling of me, that 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 giving back doesn't come from you. It comes from Allah. And so this really really is liberating because Suppose you are, you know, you're, you're in a, in a friendship or you're in a, in a relationship and you're, you're giving so much to this friendship and you don't feel like it's being reciprocated. Well, that's not going to get you down because you know that whatever you gave, you're going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you really care about that person and you're, you know, you're trying to, to, for example, help them out if they're struggling, you know, in terms of deen or they're struggling with something else, you don't even need their appreciation. Because Allah is a shakur. Allah is going to appreciate what you're doing. And Allah is going to reward you for what you're doing. And so you're no longer get in this vulnerable situation where you're constantly uh, broken or you're constantly disappointed or that you're this needy person who needs to be filled by other people or other things. Now, uh, again, we're talking on serenity and we're talking about your questions, uh, your issues. What are the things that you're dealing with and, and what are the, you know, what are the types of spiritual solutions that we can find to our everyday struggles? Please do write in at serenity at onelegacyradio.com and please remember to tune in next week at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.